Hey, good afternoon everyone. It's Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest. Today I just wanted to do another garden update. I uh, did one maybe a month and a half, two months ago. But as you know, uh, as the season progresses, uh, a lot of things change in the garden. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some of the plants that are in bloom right now, and then also talk about some of the uh, projects I've been working on. So right here in front of me, uh, we have an obedient plant. This is a great pollinator plant. It's great for wet spots. It always has a lot of pollinator activity on it, as you can see. Uh, this is a, a plant that can spread when it's happy, and that's a good thing, I think. <laughs> so uh, it comes in different shades. I have some pink and white, and it's really hardy. Uh, you're supposed to call it obedient plant because when you bend it down, it kind of wants to stay in the position that you, that you bend it. And I don't know how well that works, but this is a plant... Uh, my grandma used to have this uh, when I was a kid, and she used to kind of show me how you know, used to bend it. So that's another reason I like this plant, because it has uh, brings back some memories from when I was a kid. So behind it comes my turtle head. Uh, this is going to be blooming soon. Uh, it looks great uh, next to this obedient plant. Uh, coming around the pond, everything's filled in. I got my cattails coming in. Uh, this is pickerel. I was a little disappointed with this. Northern uh, pickerel usually has a spiky uh, purple flower on it, but I, I don't know if this has just reverted back to its wild form or not, but it, really they're just kind of small, insignificant white flowers. It's still not bad. I like the foliage. Uh, lilies are really filling in. I split this up this year. I also added a new uh, pink hardy lily. So this will had a really gorgeous flower on it yesterday. And then the last thing I want to do is add a yellow one in here, but then it has, of course, the lizard's tail. So this this uh, bed right here that I've been working on, I've planted some more echinacea, some more swamp milkweed. I took out a couple clumps of the northern sea oats, I left one clump in over there, but they just kind of reseed themselves so much. I just don't want to be in here all the time pulling out northern sea oat sprouts. And of course, this is the bone set. I've done videos on this. This is a great pollinator plant stays in bloom a long time I love this plant germinates easy this is a, this is a no-brainer for a pollinator garden it's a great plant uh, purple comb or uh, black-eyed Susans are really coming into their own right now I like I like black-eyed Susans uh, I don't know as far as a pollinating plant I would just rank them as kind of mediocre but uh, they do attract some some bees and stuff I do see some butterflies on them uh, but they do add a nice punch of color, they, and they are native, and they do, you know, they do support wildlife. And then I got some liatris coming around here. Uh, I'm going to go around to the front here. I really wanted to show you guys some of the Stokes asters that I have in bloom now. Uh, these are a really gorgeous plant. They always have pollinators, little sweat bees and hoverflies and things like that. Love these, and they look really great with the uh, with the little blue stem. Little blue stem is one of my favorite native grasses, and it's a good plant for uh, butterflies, skippers, and uh, small butterflies like that use them as a host plant. So swinging around to this next bed, so these beds have been a work in progress. So this bed coming around here, uh, I made this path, and uh, inadvertently, you know, it kind of worked itself out so that this northern hemlock is kind of like right in the middle of the path. So I kind of have to make a decision about where the thing, if I'm going to move this and where to. It's really doing good here, and I really hate to move it, but uh, I don't know. It's just right here blocking my path. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just need to have people walk around it. But anyway, this section of this this new bed that I did this year, I just planted a bunch of purple cone flower that I started from seed. So this will be filling in next year, and they should bloom next year. And then I'm also going to work in some some uh, either some more swamp milkweed uh, or maybe some more obedient plant but the, the you know the purple coneflower is going to be purple so I want to have something in there that's going to kind of contrast with that uh, but maybe not necessarily if I, if I do some more swamp milkweed there is a white variety and a pink variety I actually prefer the, the pinker variety but uh, this is going to look really good next year so this year or uh, this this particular bed I did this year too and uh, I got a witch hazel in there, which I've done videos on. I've got more liatris. I've got some Christmas fern, and I've got some uh, red chokeberries. 
but uh, I'm kind of really I got to finish this up I just got the rocks around it the other day finish that up so I'm gonna I'm gonna sheet mulch the rest of this grass I might even build up the soil a little bit and then do some dwarf uh, native hydrangeas hydrangea arborescence I think that'll look nice uh, and then coming around here this is an area that I just worked on this week so this this whole slope here is going to be new a new bed uh, so I'm going to sheet mulch all this whole area I got oh there's a butterfly man it almost looked like a morning cloak I didn't get a good look at it though man I wish it'd come back I got a willow planted up there morning cloaks like willows so I just planted a black willow that I, I uh, started a, a uh, cutting on and it really took so hopefully that'll attract them but th so this area is gonna all be sheet mulched I got uh, a yellow twig dogwood here and I also have a, uh, a native uh, rose mallow hibiscus so I'm gonna sheet mulch this this is gonna be more purple cone flower it's gonna be more uh, milkweed uh, things like that and maybe even some bone set there's a monarch flying around it's lay laying eggs on my on my uh, milkweed over there Let's see if I can get a shot of them so this this central uh, this central bed here is going to be bone set it's going to be purple coneflower it's going to be black-eyed Susans this is a swamp rose one of our native roses there's the there he is flitting around and then this and then this third uh, section here I'm gonna have another row of rocks going up there and then this is gonna be more uh, probably more purple coneflower more black-eyed Susans I'm gonna work some shrubs in here I have some culverts some more culvers root over here and I have a couple uh, this is a this is a uh, royal fern and then I have a couple uh, cultivars of nine bark even though I'm not that crazy about the ones that have the I think this is Diablo that have the reddish uh, foliage because that's actually a deterrent from uh, from uh, it's actually a, a deterrent for uh, caterpillars and all that to eat on them the more red concentration in the foliage there's a chemical in there that uh, you know kind of wards off insects eating them it's still pretty. I planted it here a few years ago. I'm not going to get rid of it. it kind of looks nice. This is a native uh, yellow twig dogwood that I found that's variegated. It took me a long time to, to find this. I forget exactly the species, but it but it's uh, it's really pretty. I'm starting a layer on it. So this is this area is going to be filled with all that. And then I have other stuff up top. So this whole area is work in progress. And then as I get done with this section, uh, all this up here will be... I'm going to outline this in rock too. So up here I have my uh, sweet, uh, my uh, bayberries, uh, Joe Pie weed, my white oak. It got eight, uh, eaten on last year by a deer. So I, I uh, had a cage around it during the winter time, but it's looking okay. It was good. Some of the leaves were getting a little, I don't know what that was, but it's sending out a lot of new growth. So I love white oaks. Now this is the straight species of the nine bark. Uh, it's always best to go with straight species if you can. There's been a lot of studies on cultivars and you know, it kind of depends on how the cultivar, you know, how the, the color uh, affects insects or the shape of the flower itself. Sometimes uh, it looks pretty to us, but it might render the plant or the flower unusable. Especially, you see a lot of those in, uh, you see a lot of cultivars with purple cone flower, double blooms and stuff like that. Just got to be careful. I always kind of prefer the straight species. So I like the purple cone flower next to the Diablo. Looks good. And then in front of the Diablo, uh, nine bark, I have some golden goldenrod, and the goldenrod really pops next to this burgundy color. And then, you know, this is, you'll all recognize this. This is not a native plant. <laughs> it's uh, Queen Anne's Lace, of course. But uh, they are used by black swallowtails as a host plant since they utilize members of the Karis family. So I have some of this and I have some Golden Alexander. So that's really what I've been working on. Uh, I've been really busy last couple days, especially. Here's that monarch again. 
they really love the bone set and they love this uh this is the the pink variety of the swamp milkweed i actually really prefer it a lot more than the white variety for some reason i don't know why they, sm they have a really nice scent to them both of them do but they're just really pretty so there you go. That's just a real quick update showing you what I've been working on. Uh, really, I got a lot done this year actually, and I'm looking forward to keep going. And uh, this is my white turtle head. Uh, this is the host of the Baltimore Checker Spot. I've talked about that in another video. Never seen one over here, but you never know. All right. Hope you guys have a great day, great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye.